Hello everybody, this is Costas Tsakas and this is our second tutorial in Photoshop. Now in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you about the application bar, the view menu and the analysis menu. Let's start from the application bar. We've already seen the workspaces that are right here, so I'm going to start talking about those buttons. Now what Bridges is, is basically a program made by Adobe uh, that is uh, there for you to or neatly organize your images and it basically has a lot of uh, options like comments and ratings and if you have like thousands and si thousands of photos like photographers do it's much easier to find them than to actually use Windows Explorer uh, right so you can use that program if you just click on it it's gonna launch and you can uh, import photos to Photoshop and export them but I'm not gonna get into the details because I don't really use it myself now MB stands for mini bridge and mini bridge is basically a miniature version of this bridge program made by Photoshop and it shows up in this tab and it has some of the functionality of this uh, bridge program the third option is uh, has to do with the way you view things over here at your document window. And the third option of the third option, oh, that's kind of funny. Uh, if you just click on it, so rulers, it just hides the rulers from the top and the side. And if you just click on it again, it just shows them up. And the rulers basically just help you make more precise decisions over your image. And as you can see, if I move my cursor, this little line over here just moves as well and this little line at the side moves as well and it's just uh, a way of locating where your cursor is whenever you're editing. Now the guides are basically lines that help you edit your image and if I just click on my ruler and drag down and you can see that this uh, line just snapped kind of at the center of the image and that's like made by Photoshop so as to help you uh, drag a line to the center of the image and that guide basically guides you whenever you want to make for example a selection or do something with a tool it kind of guides you and it does not show up at the final version of your image just remember that it does not show up in the printed version of your image it's just there for example if I wanted to make a selection of half the image it kind of snaps over here and it's much easier for me to do the selection now if I want to make this guy disappear I just select the tool that I had before and that was this tool and I just go over it and drag it out now that's what guides are for they basically they're just to guide you and things, things snap to them so it's much easier to kind of uh, edit things now the grid you're not going to use much it just kind of hides your image but it's there to guide you as well let's just hide that now the third option is about uh, the zoom and if we have a 23 percent zoom and if I just put that to 25 percent if you can see that it zooms in a little bit and you can do the same thing from down here you can put that to 50 percent maybe and you get a lot more zooming in and there are some preset options let's just put this to 50 percent yet let's just leave it like that and arrange documents you can see I have four images open right here now you can all view them uh, in tabs but if I just clicked here on one of those options there are just different ways of viewing the images and for example this way gives me less space on each image but I can easily edit them all at once uh, and that's like the advantage of it so you can just go and change the way you view those images any way you want I'm just gonna uh, float them all in Windows now that's another option oh I forgot to talk about that and you can just have them all in different windows and you can just drag the one you actually want to edit so that's quite nice as well if you want to do it this way but I do like the option of uh, having them all in tabs just because you get a lot more space now the actual pixels is just uh, how much the image is going to be zoomed and the actual pixels is going to be a hundred percent zoom and it's going to match the resolution of your screen basically that's what it's going to do now fit on screen just fits the image on this little window so that you can view it the whole image uh, at once after that I'm just going to show you how uh, oh I'll just zoom in a little bit to show you this one now if I just go in this mode of viewing the images you'll see that better now match zoom what that does you can see that all of the images have a 23.52 uh, percent zoom except for this one that one is the active window and what it's going to do match zoom it's just going to set that zoom that the active window has to all of the other images and you can see they all zoomed in just a little bit and match location you just view the same location on every image it's not that important and match zoom and location does both things uh, together now let's just view them all back in tabs and the screen mode is basically the way you edit your image the way you view your image while editing 
Now, full screen mode with menu bar is going to give you more space because it's going to hide the taskbar at the bottom that you can't see right now because uh, I'm not recording it. But trust me, it's hidden. And you're going to get a little bit more space on editing your image. Now, the full screen mode without the menu bar is just going to hide everything. Let's just go full screen, yeah. And it's just going to hide everything and you can edit the image just alone image editing. So if I just go on the side you can see that uh, the tabs sew up and the toolbox shows up but I basically have no tool sewing up right now and to get off the full screen mode just click escape. Now the view menu basically has all of the options that were up here plus some extra options and I was, I was talking about uh, the things you can find in one place in Photoshop you can find in a whole lot of different places so zoom in and out are pretty obvious they zoom in and out of your image just a little bit uh, the fit on pixels and actual pixels is the same thing uh, as those options and the print size is actually the size that your image is going to be printed if you try to actually print it now if you go on screen mode, those are the same uh, exact options as this menu has. And you can see it says screen mode as well. Uh, after that, we have show. And basically, that uh, shows you and hides some stuff like the grid we showed before and a few other stuff. So if you ever see something on your image and you uh, don't know what it is, it's probably going to be shown and hidden from over this menu. Uh, so if you want to, you can play with that. Now snap to basically, uh, whenever you have a guide, as we talked about guides, they're lines that help you edit your image. And layers and document bounds and stuff like that. Well, your selections are going to snap to them and it's going to be easier for you to just select the whole image or part of it. And well, that's what basically snap does. Whenever you see the selection just uh, like something's just like kind of uh, moving a little bit on its own, that's because it snaps to a place and it's just to make it easier for you to uh, make more precise decisions. So you can play with that, you can get it, you're gonna get it whenever you try to make a selection and we're gonna see how selections are done in the next videos and well basically it's just there for you to make more precise decisions. You'll see that in the future, okay. So a new guide can also be created from this uh, little option over here and you can just click on it and you can give it a location and you can say I want it to be horizontal if you click OK let's just zoom out a little bit from what we learned uh, so that's 20 percent you can see that you get a guide at the exact position that you defined it to be and you can make it disappear as we said by selecting this tool and getting it off limits now the analysis menu that I said to talk about is not that important so I'm gonna go over it real quick and I'm just gonna go over the ruler tool and the count tool and the ruler tool is there for you to make uh, measurements and if you just click on it you can see it pops up in this uh, toolbox and it's just the third tool and I just clicked and dragged and what that basically did is it made a measurement and all the results of our measurement shows up over here and that's the X and Y position that my measurement started in and the width and height and angle of my position. Let's just clear this measurement right on. Now analysis, the count tool is kind of stupid to me but uh, for example if you have a flock of birds you want to count them you can just put numbers on the image and you can just put those numbers like that and you can just count how many birds or whatever apples there are and let's just clear that as well. So I hope you learned a little bit about how you view the images and the different ways of organizing them and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial so see you guys next time.